On this segment, we follow the buildup and dyno testing of a brand new 400 cubic inch short block and top end kit from Dart Machine. We take you to Michigan to show you the assembly on the new Dart short blocks. And then follow along, we travel to California to dyno the engine at West Tech Performance. Anyone can claim big horsepower numbers, but the dyno doesn't lie, and that's why we're here at West Tech Performance, because bolted to the dyno behind me is the latest in small block technology from Dart. It's called SHB. Now, it's Dart short blocks built around the all-new Dart SHB small block engine. What we're going to be testing today is the Dart top end kit. Great performance, and it's easy on your wallet. And I'm here with Steve Brulé, the man that's in charge of running the dyno here. We're going to find out how much horsepower this big mouse behind me really makes. But before we get there, Let's take a look at the top end kit, then we'll head over to Dart and check out the engine assembly. Dart top end kits are available for both big block and small block Chevrolets in a variety of power matched combinations. For a small block engine like ours, we're able to choose from both iron and aluminum heads and from 180cc to 230cc intake runners. We chose to use the kit with Pro One aluminum heads with 215cc intake runners and the single plane intake manifold. In addition, Dart includes valve covers, spark plugs, complete gaskets, and bolts. To complement our Dart top end kit, we built our test engine around a fully assembled Dart SHP short plug. Let's head over to Dart in Michigan, take a look at what went into the assembly. The short block we used is an all new product from Dart and they come fully assembled using Dart's preferred parts. They all start with a brand new Dart SHP engine block, an affordable iron block that includes performance features at a street price. Fully balanced internals consist of a brand new forged steel crankshaft, I-beam connecting rods and hyper eutectic pistons. Now we've chosen to use the 400 cubic inch block but Dart also offer a 372 cubic inch. However, over here at Power TV, we always prefer bigger. I guess we'll find out on the dyno what difference that makes. Now, we've chosen two performance upgrades on this engine, H-beam rods and forged pistons. Because we're planning to run nitrous, Dart felt that this would be a better option for us. Now, yesterday, West Tech strapped on the top end kit, so let's check out some of the highlights before we hit the dyno. After receiving our Dart short block, one of the first things that we did was install a hydraulic roller camshaft supplied by Comp Cams. The specs that we chose for it were 242 on the intake, 248 on the exhaust at 50 thousandths. Total lift is 540, 562. And while that's maybe not an all-out drag race camshaft, it's certainly going to let the guy in the lane next to you know that you're serious. We topped that off with a three-piece timing chain cover. This engine may see a little bit of double duty, so we chose the three-piece cover for accessibility and adjustability. We went ahead and installed our hydraulic roller lifters with a factory-style tie bar and spider assembly. One of the unique things about this block is that it provides us with the standoffs to be able to do that. A lot of aftermarket blocks don't. Well, once we received our short block from Dart, they supplied us with a complete top end kit, including Dart 215cc Pro 1 cylinder heads completely assembled. We then installed our Magnum push rods and 1.52 Pro Magnum roller rocker arms. The Dart single plane intake manifold, all the gaskets, fasteners, uh, even valve covers. We topped our engine off with an 830 CFM Holley HP carburetor and a full Pertronics flamethrower ignition system. Cool. Any predictions on what sort of horsepower we're going to get out of this? I don't like to make any predictions, but I think it's going to be good. All right. And we've got a full nitrous plate system from Zex over there, and we'll see what sort of horsepower we get out of that. I just love nitrous, man. So uh, let's head into the engine room. Let's go. So we're here in the engine room and we've finally got the engine fired up thanks to Steve who's done a wonderful job. Now we've got a moderate camshaft and a conservative compression ratio so we're expecting the high 400 horsepower mark. We're going to be revving the thing to about 6,500 RPM due to the fact that we're still running a hydraulic roller setup. So let's take a look. Sounds great, Steve. That's a start. Um, but looking at the numbers here, that's a little bit more than we expected. You know, it wasn't but just a few years ago where 500 horsepower was a real benchmark, and that mm -hmm. took a custom-built engine. Now we can order this stuff 
bolt it together and make 520 through 24 horsepower. Nice. It's pretty impressive. That's very impressive. So I guess it's time now to strap on the uh, Zex Nitrous. Yep, we, what, uh, what's the deal there? What are we putting into it? Well, we're putting on a Zex Perimeter Nitrous Plate. Um, a pretty straightforward system. We're going to start with a 150 horsepower shot. We're going to increase the octane of the fuel. We ran these tests on 91 octane. We're going to put some race gas in it with the added cylinder pressure. We just want to make sure we don't run into any problems. Any predictions? I'm thinking that with 150, we should be able to make 150. All right, let's do it. Our first run was pretty stout, but for consistency, we made a total of two nitrous runs. So we've completed our two nitrous runs. Steve, what were the numbers in the end? Well, on the 150 horse shot, we were able to make a, an additional 146 horsepower. But after looking at the data, I saw that we were actually really very conservative on the air fuel ratio. So I felt like we could maybe, quote, cheat the system a little bit, if you will. So I went out and warmed the bottle up and added another 100 PSI to it, left the fuel pressure where it was, and we were uh, rewarded with a 702 horsepower pull. That's awesome. Seriously. Um, now, just so you know, Dart recommends that you don't go over 600 horsepower on these engines, but this one sounded just fine. Hot rodders are hot rodders. We're always going to go over the recommendation. Exactly. I think I might have to invest in a small block Chevy myself. So the engine's coming off the dyno here at West Tech Performance, and a big thanks to the guys here. They've done a wonderful job building the engine and testing it for us today. Also a big thank you to Dart, CompCams, TCI, Zex, Holly, and Petronics. It's well exceeded all of our expectations, and hopefully you've learned a little more about what a small block Chevy can do power-wise. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but the engine we just tested is going into this bad boy. Our riced out rat rod 240SX. It's two and a half thousand pounds and it's going to have a 700 horsepower small block Chevy. My name's Bucko. Thanks for watching Power TV.